Brett Favre finally talks. Front page. Meh. Nothing new. Right? We all knew this. He told us essentially nothing. Hey, I'm Brett Favre. My arm feels better. I'm going to play football. We've known that. For the Vikings. We've known that too. So still nothing. So that's all I'm going to say about Brett until he actually signs. Or until it's decided that he's not going to. And then I'll say, oh, Brett Favre signed up. Or, ooh, Brett Favre is not playing. I'll say that. And that'll be it. Smith Dog says he hates Joe Buck when he's calling games on Fox. Really? How can you hate Joe Buck? I mean, that's when I like him. That's what he's supposed to be doing. He's a game-calling guy. I just, I didn't dig it when he came and tried to be a late-night talk show host. He's much funnier. Like, I've heard him on, uh, I think on Colin Cowherd a few times, maybe the Dan Patrick show. He's much funnier in just a regular, uh, you know, kind of a, what is it, ad-libbing kind of a situation. Just being himself. He's a funny guy. And then he goes out there and tries to read, you know, scripted jokes. It's just not that funny. And I, I really, I had to change it. I just, I quit watching. I lost interest. And about ten minutes in, lost interest. And apparently, and I didn't see this, maybe one of you guys did. Apparently, Artie Lang, the guy from the Howard Stern show, showed up and made some sort of big scene. Like, I don't know what happened. But, uh... <laughs> I, apparently, so I've been meaning to look it up on YouTube, but I just haven't had time. Like I said, I'm just so busy. I didn't have time to fix my camera. I didn't have time to make any notes for the show. I'm just winging it. Uh, Smith Dog says he doesn't know why he doesn't like him. Maybe it's being in his late dad's shadow. So it's the same, like, the Kobe Bryant thing. People don't like Kobe because he's in Michael's shadow. <laughs> you, you don't like Joe Buck because of his dad. His dad was so great. Jack Buck. The late great Jack Buck. Ellis says, it show, Eric. I assume you mean it shows that I didn't have time to jot down notes for a show? <laughs> That's a lie, dude. This is going smooth. This is going... I I can talk. I can just talk. Uh, you know, I, I just can. I can talk. You guys all showed up late. The only person that got to hear my new intro that I made was was Matt Whalen. You guys all showed up late. I made I spent so much time yesterday, like maybe three or four hours, making a new intro. And you guys all missed it but Matt. <laughs> Matt says at least it started on time tonight. Let me tell you guys, it, it, Elwood, Smith Dog, I know you guys have seen Matt in the chat room here the last few weeks. Crans, you know you know who Matt is. We all went to high school together. Matt Whalen is a, a, a friend of ours from high school. I think graduated a year ahead of me. And now our kids are on the same T-ball team. <laughs> and, and last week I skipped my show Wednesday and I totally ruined Matt's night because he skipped his kids' T-ball game to go for a jog so he could be at home. And... Um, and catch the show. I didn't even do a show. So I made him miss his kid's t-ball game. I felt awful about that. But then Monday, we're at the game, and Matt's kid's up to bat, and, it, you know, it's it's coach pitch, coach pitch baseball, t slash t-ball, and the coach is pitching the ball to his son, and every ball is bouncing, like, right in front of the plate. Coach just wasn't putting enough oomph into it. Right? And uh, and I look over at Matt, and I say, oh, they, they got to throw the ball a little harder, man. They're coming in low. You know, your kid can't hit that. Matt's just staring off into space, not even watching. He goes, what What happened? I wasn't watching. <laughs> He's like, dude, that's your kid. <laughs> Anyhow, Matt can't watch his kid bat because he doesn't want to be one of those dads that yells at his kid at the at t-ball the game. <laughs> and he knows he will be. So I guess we commend you for that. <laughs> you got to control the crazy, dude. You got to control the crazy. Now, I just said, hey, you, you got to bite your tongue during the game, but then on the way home, then you critique the entire way home. So that way not everyone knows that you're crazy, obsessive, uh, competitive guy. See, uh, going back, okay, back up in the chat room a little bit. Cran says, I like Kobe, true competitor, champion. See? See? That's, that, and that's what I feel. Like, God, this guy's incredible. How can we just hate him because we want to hate him? Oh, yeah, Matt, sorry I told your wife that tonight. It's funny. It's a funny story. <laughs> it's a funny story. I didn't mean to tell on you. I hope I didn't get you in trouble. It's a good thing. You're, you're, you're doing it for a good reason. You're not doing it because you don't want to watch your kid play. 
you're doing it so you don't embarrass him by yelling and screaming during the game. It's a good thing. Nothing to be in trouble about. <laughs> uh, yep, 940 already. Listen, football's coming up much sooner than we realize. And so very, very soon I'm going to start be uh, doing the fantasy football face punch as a part of my show. And I'm getting really excited. I just got my first fantasy football magazine, the ESPN Fantasy. <clears throat> There's some odd rankings in there. Like, I, you know, every year I put out uh, rankings, I do top 25s of all the positions. I think last year I actually did like 40 for wide receivers. And I post them, and I go over them on the show. Um, I'm not going to do that this year. I'm actually, I will be doing my top, you know, position players and everything. And I'll be going over them on the show. I'm not going to post them, however, at least not before my league drafts, because I actually know uh, of at least one guy in my league that prints out my top 25 and uses it. I'm just, I'm just saying, it, and so, and I, I think he actually did better than me this season. So, that's another guy in my league letting me do the homework, then printing out all of my my you know my my hard work that i've worked so hard to uh, compile and he, he prints it out and then he brings it to the draft and then he uses my work against me and does better than me in the league so i'm not doing that this year i'm not posting it. i'll go over it and i'll go through the top uh, players at all the positions on the show transit it's not you i can tell you that much i'm not i'm not trying to point fingers or, or say any names but I definitely, I had a call on my phone before the last draft that was like, hey man, you got to post me up that top 25 on my page so I can use it for the draft. I'm not going to say any names, but it was Zach Berg. I don't want to point fingers, but it was Zachary Lee Berg. <laughs> I will. I'll put, yeah, I'll, I'll post it after the draft. I'm just saying, I don't want, and Cranes, I know you do your own homework. Uh, you'll take a look at what I do. You know what I mean? But it's not going to affect what you do. So I, you know, I'm not worried about you, but I'm saying I, there are guys in our league that don't put in the work that like you or I or Diggs put in. And so I'm, I'm sure not going to do the work for him. <laughs> uh, anyhow, that's coming up. Football's coming up. Can't wait. Um, 943. Kranz, have you not heard Nick's commercial yet? The guy LaBeouf. All right, check it out. Because I want I want you guys to hear my new intro and uh, and Kranz, I'll let you hear Guy LaBeouf if you want, and then uh, and then I'll come back and wrap this up and get out of here because it's late and we have so much to do still. So uh, here it is, Guy LaBeouf <laughs> for you, Kranz. I know you guys have heard it the last couple weeks on here. Kranz hasn't heard it yet, so here goes, uh, Guy LaBeouf. Uh, Guy LaBeouf. Here we go. Greetings, hockey parents. Guy LaBeouf here. Is your child running a little shy on athleticism, natural talent, and hand-eye coordination? Well, hockey parents, don't worry about a thing. At Guy LaBeouf's Pee Wee Hockey Enforcers Camp, we can help give your little tiger a future in sports, despite the fact that they will obviously never be the high scorer at anything. At Guy LaBeouf's Little Enforcers Camp, we teach your kid invaluable enforcer techniques. Like how to sneak in a cheap shot on the other team's star player. We'll also teach him the correct way to pull your opponent's jersey completely over his head before you uppercut him in the face and throat. And we'll teach your little slugger to stop pummeling his foe as soon as he falls to the ice because we all know that etiquette is the most important thing in a fist fight. Skeptical? Ask anyone who knows hockey. Enforcers make a lot of money in the NHL. It's never too early to start learning. Come on down to the rink and sign up in person, or just email me at glaboofer at hotmail.com. No pucks, no sticks, just gloves so we can drop them. Guy LaBeouf's Pee Wee Hockey Will Enforcers Camp. We can't make your kid a sports star, but we might make him a hockey star. And that pays too. Thanks for your time, hockey parents. 